Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Sanch, welcome back to the Bodybuilding News Network for another daily installment of Bodybuilding Today. We have a good seven topics to talk about today, including Nick Walker, James Hollingshead, Antoine Viant, and Keon Pearson, as well as uh, Terrence Ruffin is going to be in here, Lucas Cohilio. So if you're interested, stay tuned. You can see Totoro scratching the wall for some reason. But in a recent news update from RX Muscle, uh, specifically Dave Palumbo, he raises the question of whether or not Nick Walker is going to do a surprise late entry into the 2024 Arnold Classic. Now, although I think that that would validate why Nick is so lean in his offseason, I genuinely do not think that Nick Walker is going to do the 2024 Arnold Classic, despite the fact that we have not seen him on the Arnold stage in it will be three years. He won the 2021, and we just haven't seen him on the stage since then. Or no, we did see him last year, right? We saw him last year, uh, and uh, it was a very close battle. But I don't think we're going to see him at the Arnold Classic this year. He's said so many times in physique updates and on his Instagram that he's not doing the show. So I would have to assume he's not doing this show. But it does raise an exciting question of whether or not he will or will not. Someone who I wish would have done the Arnold Classic but did drop out is Terrence Ruffin in the Classic Physique division. He is one of the best Classic Physiques in the world, and he's placed second at the Mr. Olympia. Unfortunately, he did drop out, not specifically for health or any of those other normal reasons, but because he was wanting to focus his energy on opening up his gym with his partner. So, a very interesting reason why to jump out, but uh, or drop out, not jump. But I understand the reason. It makes sense. You know, you want to focus on your your career. You want to focus on making sure you're putting your priorities and your energy in the right thing in the right places. I get that. I completely understand it. Not upset with him. But the physique updates are making it look like he's still really lean. So he could do a show somewhat soon. Now, in, I would say, breaking news as of Yamamoto saying it, I'm going to agree with them as well, Keon Pearson leaving his somewhat long-term sponsor, Axe and Sledge, moving into Yamamoto Nutrition. Now, I don't know how I feel about this move. They have signed Regan Grimes in the last couple of years, so they are they are kind of on this acquisition campaign of getting big names. And with Keon winning the 212 Olympia title, he definitely is going to, he definitely has put himself into that influential sphere of being a big name. So the question I'll ask to you is, you know, have you ever considered buying Yamamoto products? And also have you kind of seen them trying to move and put themselves into a, marketing situation where uh, they're becoming more relevant. Someone like Muscle Tech is doing that. So let me know your thoughts on that. Keon moving to Yamamoto Nutrition. Now, physique updates from, from James Hollingshead. Now, we have two of them, one about 10 hours ago, and then one of them a day ago. So somewhat old. I could have talked about it yesterday. But James is continuing to, I mean, he's really impressing me. I'm genuinely stoked to see how he's going to do at the Arnold Classic. And the question I wanted to pitch to all of you is, do you think that with the recent dropout of Andrew Jack and the question mark on Rubiel Mascara and Hadi Chupin, could James, even if they do show up, could James place in the top five for the men's open at the Arnold Classic this year? Let me know your thoughts down below. Someone who's going to be probably right behind James Hollingshead if he continues to show the improvements that we're seeing in these videos now is Antoine Viant. Now, Antoine is a guy I didn't want to, to write him off. I was looking at these physique updates and I was thinking to myself, genuinely, I was saying it out loud. I was thinking, these are not blowing me away as much as James are. But I will say this. Antoine has won shows before. He is a competitive men's open bodybuilder. So you can't write the guy off. He's got crazy wheels. He brings really good conditioning and he has an amazing stage presence. So when you look at it from a marketing point of view, Antoine is probably what the Arnold Classic is looking for. And they're probably going to be continuing 
to promote someone like Antoine, and that could lead into better placings. So, of course, let me know your thoughts on Antoine Vaillant. Where do you see him placing? Can he make a top six finish? Now, moving into some off-season updates real quick, Sergio Oliva Jr. continuing to train with the Shadow. Eight time, I did say, or six time, I meant to say six, that's so funny. Oh, I'm so red now. Six time Mr. Olympia champion, Dorian Yates. And there's a few different variations of the training footage you're going to see in the background. But what I wanted to focus on was, does anyone know at what point Sergio moved from Dubai to where he's training now? Or is this just a, a different Dubai show? It's a different gym there. You know, let me know if you guys know anything about that. But interesting points pulling or taking away from the training footage we're seeing here with Sergio and Dorian training in their off season. One, we don't know what show he's going to do. He hasn't announced it yet. Uh, he did jump into the Legion quite late last year. So you could maybe expect him to do a long off season and then jump into a late Olympia qualifier in 2024. But also as he moves into, I believe it's the next footage, you're going to see him doing some Dorian Yates rows or some Yates rows. And I was literally doing some bent over barbell rows today and I, I, I want to pitch it to you guys and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, what are the pros and cons of a Yates row versus a more traditional strict bent over row, or I guess you could call it like a pedlay. Is, is that what it's called? A penlay row? Let me know your thoughts on those two exercises. What are the pros and cons? I'm just trying to make my training a little bit better. So, you know, let me know your guys' thoughts, of course, in the comment sections below on on uh, these physique updates in the off season. You know, where do you expect Sergio Oliva to do a show? Are you expecting him to, you know, is he already kind of in shape? You really can't see it with the shit with the shirt and it looks like it's somewhat com uh, covered up, but Hey, you know, let me know if you guys know anything in the background. I know you guys are fanatics on some of these athletes. So sometimes, you know, things that I don't. Moving into some 212 updates, Lucas Cohelio posting physique updates coming into his return. I believe he's done the New York Pro before, but 17 weeks out from the 2024 New York Pro, you got to think it's going to be him, it's going to be Kareth Bajo, and there might be a couple other big names jumping into that New York Pro, the coveted New York Pro ring, right? That 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 212 ring. Um, you're going to see some good names come into that show. The New York Pro has always been a top tier show, and I'm excited to see one of the best 212 Brazilian bodybuilders coming into the uh, to the New York Pro. So excited for that. I think he looks phenomenal already. 17 weeks to continue to perfect this physique. It's going to blow us away to see the finished product. But that's the news for today. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Check out the Patreon. Vote on the exclusive content. We have some very exciting content coming out on that and some other secret projects in the works. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. I'm your host, Josh Sanch, and I'll see you tomorrow.